In this video I want to show you how to knit these mittens. Uh, this mitten that I have here is meant for someone one and a half, two years old and it's quite short. Um, you can use the same number of stitches up to ages three, maybe even four by adjusting the length of the thumb and the mitten here. I am... In this video I will show you the whole process of making this mitten with all the techniques I use and the recipe will be posted on the blog as well. You can find a link in the video description underneath the window where the film is shown and uh, the yarn I have used will give 22 stitches in 10 centimeters when using needles 3.5 to make sure the mittens don't stretch too much and keep their shape I have used needle size 3 millimeters five of them and to hold my stitches when making the thumb hold I have a safety pin. You can use you don't have to use a safety pin you can use whatever device that is suited to hold a few stitches. So that's it and I hope you will enjoy knitting the mittens. So, first step is to cast on, and uh, first thing I do is I make a slip knot like this, and I place it onto my first needle and just pull not too tight but enough to make it sit close on the needle. And when I cast on for cuffs or elastic pieces, I do like this. I just hold, this will be the first stitch, I just hold it like this. And then I use my right hand and pinch the yarn between my middle finger and thumb, like that. Then I use my index finger and I move it here under the yarn and I move up and I twist so that I make a loop around my index finger. I take my knitting needle and I place it on top of the yarn. I move down to the tip of my index finger and up through the loop and then I just slip it onto my needle and I pull just to make it sit close to the first stitch. And then again, index finger from down and up, twist, knitting needle on top, moving down to the tip of my index finger, up through the loop, slip it onto the needle and move it close to the stitch I did before. And I will just continue until I have the required amount of stitches on my needle like this and then I get my next needle and I place it underneath like this close to the last stitch on the first needle and then I just keep going I make sure the first stitch here ends up close to the last stitch on the other needle just to make sure I don't get any unnecessary gaps. And I will just keep going until I have cast on to all of my four needles and then I will be ready to begin knitting. 
Now I have finished my cast on and I'm ready to begin knitting. So the first and last needle I cast on I have placed on top of the others and that's just to make it easier for me to begin knitting. And uh, for these mittens the first three rows will be uh, row one I will purl row 2 I will knit and row 3 I will purl. So this is what we are going to do now. And um, when I knit with one color I keep it over two fingers like this and I secure it here with my little finger. And this is this is optional. You do whatever you are used to or like better. So uh, when I purl, I begin here at the tip of my index finger and I move behind the yarn and I pick up the stitch from down and up and I go back behind the yarn. I bring the yarn through the stitch and I slip it off the needle and then I move the whole thing as close as I am able to to the last stitch here on this needle just to avoid any unnecessary gaps and then I just continue behind the yarn up through the stitch back behind the yarn bring the yarn through the stitch and slip it off and as you can see here it's easy to get these gaps and if I pull, you can see it gets bigger. So to avoid it, or to fix it when you have made a gap, you just make sure that you do not pull here at all. Just slip the stitch over onto the other needle and just leave it. And there you can see my gap is almost gone. And when I continue, there you can see. So uh, the reason why it happens is because with this method for casting on, uh, the stitches aren't locked. They can, if you you can pull on one and make the other one tighter, or you can create gaps between them. So it is a little unstable to knit the first row because of this but after you are finished knitting the first row uh, this will no longer be a challenge and um, you will end up with a narrow and pretty edge that is also really elastic and comfortable so I will continue now to purl until I reach the beginning of my row again Now I have finished my first row where I did only oh, well where I did purl stitches only and now I will do a row with knit stitches only. And when normally when I do knit stitches I will begin from the left through the stitch and towards the right like this. But because I did purl stitches on the last row, this means I will twist my stitch. You can see it if I if I do like this. And now you can if you look here, you can see that the stitch will be almost triangular and pointy at the, the bottom end. And this is because the yarn is twisted once at the bottom. But what I will do instead is to stick my needle through this uh, stitch here from the right and towards the left. And now you can see that the stitch is much more open and flat at the bottom. This means it's not twisted and this is what I will do. So uh, regardless of 
whether I go from right or left I will when I have picked up the stitch I will go to the tip of my index finger behind the yarn bring it through the stitch and slip it off the needle like this and if if this row uh, wasn't purl stitches but knit stitches then I would be able to go from this this side so I will just continue to knit the the entire row and uh, then I will purl one row and after that I will get back to you with the next step. Now I have finished my first three rows purl knit purl and uh, the next thing I will do is that I will knit the first stitch, I will purl the next and I will continue to knit and purl every other stitch and I will continue throughout the row and when I have finished this row I will do one more in the exact same way where I knit my knit stitches and purl my purl stitches and when I have done both rows I will get back to you with next step so now I have done two rows of knit purl knit purl knit purl and you can see that it looks like the beginning of a ribbing but now for the next two rows I will knit opposite of what I have done here which means that I will purl the first stitch and then knit the second and then I will purl knit and purl and knit and this I will also do for two rows and after those two rows I will switch again so it it will become sort of a moss stitch only I um, do two rows with the same same stitch before I switch so I will do this until I have the amount of repetitions that I want or that, or that the pattern says that I should have and then I will get back to you with the next step now I have finished this first part of the cuff and the next thing I will do is to knit ribbing for about 10 rows at least for the size I'm knitting now but check the pattern um, and I will begin just I will pick I could continue purl one knit one purl one knit one as I have done in the last two rows or I can begin to knit and then purl doesn't matter just pick one and do the same on both mittens so uh, this I will uh, continue around and around and I will now knit over knitted stitches purl over purl stitches but in the first row and the first row only now I will decrease by four stitches so um, on each needle I'll have to make one decrease and I do it by knitting two stitches together so here I have a purl stitch so next one will be a knit stitch and instead of 
just knitting the one I will take one two stick my needle through both pick up the yarn and knit it in just the same way as I would have done with one and then I will purl the next one knit purl knit and when I go to the next I will do the same and don't worry about now it has changed here that I purl over the purl stitches from the last two rows it doesn't matter because when I decrease the next time let's get both like this it'll be back to how I started that I purl over the knit stitches and knit over the purl stitches so now I will continue to knit the next rows purl over purl stitches knit over knit stitches to make the ribbing now I have finished the ribbing here and I have done four rows of this pattern and now it is time to do increases for the thumb and I will begin I will continue to knit this pattern and I will knit just one stitch and I will pick up the yarn between the stitch I just knitted and the next and place it like this onto my left knitting needle my right needle I stick through the opposite way make them switch places and then I knit and the reason why I do this whole operation like this is because then I will twist this stitch um, if I don't if I just pick it up like this and knit it will be a big hole here so that's why I stick my needle through switch places and then knit no hole so now I have made the first increase and then I find some yarn just some leftover yarn in a different color and I place it just between the stitches like this and then I have to knit two stitches purl knit in my case here to make it match the pattern and then I take the yarn end and pull it back here onto the side facing me so now I have a marker that lets me know that I have one increase on this side and now when I make it here one increase on the other side like this so now I have made the first increases for the thumb and I will just continue to knit my pattern all the way around until I get to the beginning of my row and then I will knit one more round without increasing just knit over knit stitches and purl over purl stitches and then I'll get back to you with the next increase now I have finished my first increase and the rest of that row and I have also knitted the next row and I'm ready to do my second increase and now I have because of my last increase I have two knit stitches one purl stitch and two knit stitches here to begin with so to fix that and get my pattern straight again I 
Now I purl the first stitch, I knit the second, and here you can see my marker. I want to make one here to increase. So I place it, uh, I want to purl this one. And to be able to pick up the yarn here, I have to twist it once and then I can purl and then I knit and purl and here is my second marker and this one I can knit as I did before and now purl and knit and I can continue like this throughout the row and I will repeat my pattern on the next row but no increases on the next row just knit over knit stitches and purl over purl stitches so now I have finished my increases and um, I left you after doing the second uh, increase. After that I have knitted one more uh, repetition of the pattern, two rows. So I now have my first increase and one row after that, my second increase, one row after that and then two additional rows. And now I will make the thumb hole I will continue to knit my pattern there we go so this is the first stitch in my row I will purl that one and now I have here is my marker and if I follow here I have the two stitches that I begun with in the middle and I have two increases on the right side and two increases on the left side so six stitches in all and I will take those and place them onto a um, safety pin you can use leftover yarn, a circular needle or whatever you have that will do the job four five six there and then I have my needle with the first stitch I will take that one and I will cast on six new stitches the same way as I did here one two three four five six And now I can just continue to knit my pattern. Knit and purl. Knit and purl. And I'll continue until I get to the beginning of my row. In the next row uh, these six stitches will be knitted according to the pattern as the others and to figure out how to begin when you get here you could either um, you could either just now you know this is a purl stitch so you know that you will begin purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, knit 
and so on. If you didn't have that, you could go from the other side and you could see here you want to pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, knit, pearl, and you'd get the same result. So just keep knitting the pattern until the mitten has the required length and I will get back to you on how to decrease for the tip. Now I have knitted so that my mitten measures for the size I'm knitting approximately 5.5 centimeters here from the edge of the thumb hole and up to here. And I'm ready to begin my decreases to make the tip and to do that I need two markers I'll just I don't need this one anymore so um, I have on my needles 40 stitches and I will decrease at the beginning of the row and halfway so and uh, I will still keep knitting my pattern so I'll just place my marker like this and I will it's time to purl here so I will purl my first stitch and bring my marker back like this now I will know where to make my decreases and uh, I want to make a pointy tip it looks like this so when I decrease from the right and towards the left I decrease like this I slip the first stitch and I knit the second or in this case I purl I just follow my pattern and the first stitch I will slip over like this and I'll continue now I have done since I have um, 40 stitches stitch number one will be one side band and stitch number 21 Will be the second so and now I will knit until I have two stitches remaining uh, before I get to stitch number 21 so the one and this was two and three so four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and now I have to move this one onto my next needle or this one I can choose and now I will knit this stitch place it back onto my needle I take the next step, stitch and I just pull it over like this and back onto my right needle so now I have found uh, my second marker and I will place it after 
my last decrease the same way as I did before and I will continue to knit one stitch this will be my second sideband and bring my marker back and I'll do the same thing on this side so slip knit and slip over just as I have done on this side I will repeat on this side that makes four um, decreases in one row and I will do this in each row until I have just a few stitches left and then I'll get back to you to show you how to finish the tip now I have finished my decreases and as you can see I have this nice shape on the tip of my mitten I have cut my yarn and uh, to finish I will just knit the remaining stitches in total before you start this step you it will be okay to have 8 10 12 stitches remaining so round about that that way the mitten won't be too pointy so when I knit one stitch when I slip it off I just pull the yarn end through and then I do the next I just knit it and pull the yarn end through and I continue until I have no needles left or stitches left to knit and then I am left with a hole here I will close that hole just by pulling on my yarn end like this and I'll leave this for now and I will get back to you on how to make the thumb last thing to do is to make the thumb uh, here I have the six stitches that I cast on after making or when making this thumb hole so I will pick up the these six stitches one two three four five and six like this and I have six stitches here on my safety pin I'll take another needle and I'll transfer them onto the needle And I will find my yarn and I'll just pull the yarn through the tom hole and out here at the bottom. To secure it I just wind it around my thumb 
a few times. That is just to make sure I don't pull my yarn out of the thumb hole when I begin so that I am able to put some tension on it. And now I just begin to knit the thumb and I will follow the pattern. So here I have two purl stitches which means it is time for a knit stitch here and purl knit purl knit and purl uh, I will actually place the two last stitches on a different needle. I can let this one go now because it's difficult to knit with just two needles in the round and I will find another one and here in this gap I will pick up one stitch I'll do so from the inside I'll just find somewhere perhaps this one I will knit this and I will just continue my pattern as I have done knit, purl, knit and purl regardless of what I have here because this will be in the this will be folded the thumb will be folded over this so it will not be visible if it doesn't match there. Knit and it's quite tight here where I have cast on these six stitches but it will get better on the second row it's only this first that you have to be a bit slow knit and I will also pick up one stitch from the inside here close to the edge but and there and and pearl and I'll just continue to follow my pattern here you can see I'm pulling my yarn again so I have to tighten this. This will only happen in the first couple rows. After that it will be the yarn will be locked and don't have to worry about it. So you just go round and around and follow your pattern. You decrease for the tip of the thumb in the same way as you did the mitten itself and I will be back with the finished result. Now I have finished the mitten but as you can see it is not, at least in my opinion, very pretty here at the tip. We have something looking like two thick braids on each side here and it doesn't really um, it doesn't look like the pattern don't misunderstood it could very well be used like this it's no problem probably when it is used no one will notice 
but if you don't like it you can just first attach these to yarn ends on this side and just turn the mitten inside out because um, the thing about the stitches I have used both on the mitten and the ribbing here on the cuff it looks the same on both sides so now when I have turned the mitten inside out you can see that I have no longer these braids on the side and it also has a rounder appearance here and the same thing with the thumb so you can choose which way you want it to be and of course to attach this one you have to do that on what will become the inside so only thing left is to make another one